Hi, in this video, we're going to go over some of the basic count and sum types of functions. So let's start with the count functions. So let's, I want to actually skip down from the total cells to count the blank cells. There's a function in Excel that is conveniently count blank. So we're going to go ahead and use that. I already have a range name set up called data. So I'm going to go ahead and enter data. And that gives us the number of blank cells, which by just a glance at our data range, we can see is true. We're going to then count the non-blank cells. So we're going to do a count A. So count A counts everything that has a value, no matter what is in there, whether it's a function, text, or a number. So we're going to use count A for that. And we can see that is true. And plain old count function will give us just the numeric values. So one of the common errors is the difference between count A and count. So count A counts all non-blank. And just plain count only counts the numeric. So for total cells, there's not a function by itself that does the total cells. So we could either add up the blank and the non-blank, which would give us the total. Or in order to learn a couple new functions, we're going to take the number of rows. And we want to use rows versus reference. Row will return the row number of a particular cell versus rows returns the number of rows in a data array. So we're going to take rows times columns. And once again, we want to make sure we select the plural. Otherwise, it will return a column number. And that gives us 20, which is the same as doing blank plus non-blank. All right, those were pretty basic. So let's go ahead and go over here to this data area. So I actually have some data ranges named for office, amount, and difference. And each of those, if we look here, are by the column name. So what we have is invoices. And if uh, invoice has a difference of a negative number, it is considered past due. So we're assuming today is May 5th, and the due date was May 1st. That, in this case, gives us a difference of 34. So we're going to do some variety of count ifs or sum ifs. It looks like some of these are counts and some are sums. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to add a formula here. And we're going to do a couple of sums. So I'm just going to add some yellow cells where we're going to do those. OK. All right, so the first thing it's asking us is uh, for a sum of the total days of past due. So what we want to do is add up all of the negative values in the difference column. So one of the things we need to keep in mind is there's two functions, sum if with no s at the end, which will add up some numbers if a condition, single condition is true. And then we want the sum or the sum ifs which we need to, we can use when we have multiple conditions. So the first couple we have are actually just for sum if. So let's go. We want to add up the total numbers due. So we start with sum. The range that we're looking at is difference. The one kind of odd thing with um, the sum ifs, you put your criteria in double quotes. So what we want is that it's less than zero. We're going to put that in double quotes. And we're going to add up difference. And I notice I have a spelling error here. I believe difference. There we go. All right. And I assume I spelled that right. So we go ahead and add that up. I'm just highlighting all the negative numbers since it is a short data set, and I can check my number here. Let's go ahead and change that to a count. Let's just count how many. 
So once again, we're going to use a single count if, because we only have one criteria. And we're going to say difference. And there we go. I think I typed it correctly this time. And I'm going to, in double quotes, put less than zero. All right. So far, so good. Let's go with the total amount. Now here we're checking for difference if that's less than zero, but we're adding up a different column. We're adding up amount. So let's just go to sum if. And that range is going to be uh, difference. So same as last time. And once again, less than zero. Once again, in book quotes. But this time we are adding up amount. And actually, if we are summing up the number of past due, that's going to be the exact same as above. So I'm just going to not fill that in. So let's go ahead and add up the amount for everybody in Oregon. So once again, single criteria. So we're going to use a singular sum if. And the range is going to be office. And it's equal to Oregon. And we want to add up amount. All right, and we can kind of check that just by highlighting all the Oregon, and we get the exact same amount down here. Let's go ahead and do a count on that. So pretty much the same, except for we don't have, um, have to put in what we're adding in. All right. So let's, uh, one more, or a couple more here with a single. So let's go ahead, and this is, we're going to sum the, once again, the amount. And the range we're looking at is office. And this time, we're going to do not equal. And a not equal in Excel is a less than followed by a greater than. And or type in Oregon in double quotes. Uh, one of the key things is, uh, and I've learned the hard way, is not to put a space after that greater than and between that and Oregon. You need to keep everything all squished together. And we are going to sum amount. All right, the next one has two criteria. We want to see if the difference is less than zero to see if it's past due, as well as only those for Oregon. So let's go ahead and a sum if and a count if will work very similar. So we want to do a sum ifs with the S on the end. And it's asking us first for what we want to add up. And that will be amount. And then it's asking us for criteria one. So it's asking us first for the range. So we're going to say office and is Oregon. Then it's asking us for a criterion two, and that will be difference. And I am obviously having trouble typing that today, is less than zero. All right, so we have um, in Oregon, we have two invoices less than uh, with uh, past due. And that equals the 5250. Very good. All right. If we did a count if, we wanted to make sure we actually are using the count ifs here as well. And we're also going to say office is Oregon. And difference is less than zero. And put that in. And we have two. All right, let's go ahead and count all the invoices that are greater than 1,000 or less than or equal to 5,000. So what we're going to do is count ifs. So since we're just counting, we don't need to put in that sum range as if we were using sum ifs. So what we want is amount. And we want that greater than or equal to 1,000. And the amount also has to be less than or equal to, and I forgot my double quotes, less than or equal to 5,000. So we have to think of this as an and condition. So 
it has an invoice in order to be counted has to have an amount greater than a thousand and less than five thousand. All right, let's see what we come up with. And it's got four. One, two, three, four. And the sum if would be very similar. And this time we're adding amount. The criterion is also going to be amount. Must, uh, oops, greater than or equal to 1,000. And amount less than or equal to 5,000. And if we didn't want to include 1,000 or 5,000, we would just take out the equal signs. And there we go. So I hope this was a good summary of or refresher on how to use some of the count functions. Thank you, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.